live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. A nationwide curfew in Sri Lanka as seven die in mass protests. Troops are on the streets as unrest continues over the government's handling of the country's economic crisis. Powerful missiles target the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, destroying a warehouse and a shopping center. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of a former Filipino dictator, takes an unassailable lead in a controversial presidential election. And a female prison guard who went on the run with a prisoner has died after the couple were caught by police. They've been on the run for 11 days. In the next half hour, we live in Colombo, Odessa, Manila and New York. We start in Sri Lanka where troops and police are on the streets to enforce a nationwide curfew after violence between supporters and opponents of the government killed at least seven people. In the past month, the country has been gripped by escalating demonstrations over soaring prices and power cuts. Bradley, thanks so much for joining us from New York. Uh, we are very closely here in the UK as well, watching the Houses of Parliament today. Uh, the helicopters are up in the sky with their news cameras, uh, taking pictures of Westminster, and that's because the Queen's speech will be delivered in Parliament today, outlining the government's plans to tackle the cost of living crisis particularly, and we'll be live there very shortly. You're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Protesters in Sri Lanka say they won't stop until they force out President Rajapaksa. His brother has already resigned as Prime Minister. Troops are on the streets. Seven people have died so far as unrest continues over the government's handling of the economic crisis. Powerful missiles target the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, destroying a warehouse and a shopping centre. Yoon suk Yeol is sworn in as South Korea's new president. He used his inaugural speech to call for the complete denuclearization of the Korean peninsula. And Queen Elizabeth has pulled out of one of her most important ceremonial duties, the state opening of parliament on the advice of her doctors. Prince Charles will officially open the new session of the British Parliament in the next hour and for the first time will read the Queen's speech on her behalf. It's after Queen Elizabeth had to pull out because of mobility problems. The last time she missed a state opening of Parliament was nearly 60 years ago. Our Royal Correspondent Daniela Ralph reports. A remarkable figure and higher than people were expecting. Uh, let me update you on our top story, what we're hearing from Colombo, and that is that Sri Lanka's main political parties are meeting right now. We understand they are addressing the growing violence between supporters and opponents of the government, looking at whether a political resolution can be found when the Prime Minister, of course, we know, resigned yesterday in an attempt to dispel the unrest. Uh, and he was then evacuated, uh, Prime Minister Rajapak, from his home but there are still protesters uh, surrounding uh, his home and on the street today although a curfew is now in place. You've been watching Live with Lucy Hawkins. live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Protesters in Sri Lanka say they won't stop until they force out President Rajapaksa. His brother has already resigned as Prime Minister. Troops are on the streets and seven people have died so far as unrest continues over the government's handling of the economic crisis. 
Powerful missiles target the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, destroying a warehouse and a shopping center. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of the former Filipino dictator, takes an unassailable lead in a controversial presidential election. And Queen Elizabeth has pulled out of one of the most important of her ceremonial duties, the state opening of Parliament, on the advice of her doctors. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Colombo and Westminster and bring you the latest from our correspondents in Ukraine and Manila. We start in Sri Lanka, where troops and police are on the streets to enforce a nationwide curfew after violence between supporters and opponents of the government killed at least seven people. On Monday, thousands besieged the Prime Minister's official residence, leading to his evacuation in a pre-dawn operation. Mahinda Rajapaksa had resigned only hours earlier. A remarkable figure. Back to uh, central London right now in the scene live in the House of Lords. Uh, we're watching very closely because it is the state opening of Parliament and the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, will deliver the address to Parliament in about five minutes time. Uh, that's after we heard that Queen Elizabeth has pulled out for the first time since 1963 due to what Buckingham Palace has described as episodic mobility problems and you can see there that is the Queen's throne it will remain empty uh, with Prince Charles the Duchess of Cornwall and Prince William we think seated can't quite see them but seated in front of the assembled politicians so uh, this is when they read Prince Charles will read out the agenda of the government and we will return there very shortly so do stay with us with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Protesters in Sri Lanka say they won't stop until they force out President Rajapaksa. His brother has already resigned as Prime Minister. Troops are on the streets. Seven people have died so far as unrest continues over the government's handling of the economic crisis. Powerful missiles target the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, destroying a warehouse and a shopping centre. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of the former Filipino dictator, takes an unassailable lead in a controversial presidential election. And a female prison guard who went on the run with a prisoner has died after the couple were caught by police. They've been on the run for over 10 days. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Jaffna in Sri Lanka, Budapest and Manila. We start in Sri Lanka, where troops and police are on the streets to enforce a nationwide curfew after violence between supporters and opponents of the government killed at least seven people. On Monday, thousands besieged the Prime Minister's official residence. That led to his evacuation in a pre-dawn operation. Mahinda Rajapaksa had resigned hours earlier. A remarkable figure. I wonder who the buyer was. See you in a few minutes. live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Protesters in Sri Lanka say they won't stop until they force out President Rajapaksa. His brother has already resigned as Prime Minister. Troops are on the streets. Seven people have died so far as unrest continues over the government's handling of the economic crisis. 
Prince Charles opens the new session of the British Parliament. The Queen has missed the event for the first time in 60 years. Finland is expected to begin the process of joining NATO, redrawing the security map of Europe and antagonizing Russia. And it's back, it's as crazy as ever, but as the Eurovision Song Contest gets underway, will politics take precedence over the music? In the next half hour, we will be live at Eurovision in Turin and at Westminster, and we'll hear from our correspondents in Finland and Israel. The United Nations has condemned escalating violence in Sri Lanka after clashes which left seven people dead and more than 200 injured. People had taken to the streets to protest as the nation battles its worst economic crisis in its history. The military and police have now been given emergency powers to detain people without warrants. William, it's so lovely to talk to you and I hope you'll join us again after the event so we can catch up on everything that's happened and all the gossip too. Have fun, I'm sure you will. You've been live with Lucy Hawkins. Great to have you with us too, and I hope you can join us tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello there. Looking at the weather charts across the United States for many central and east.